if you don't do this the right way, you can literally spend thousands of dollars and wake up six months later and be looking at something else that you need to get done. And that is the reason why there are so many women out there that go back again and again and again and again and again without ever being happy. We do not want that to be you. If you don't do this the right way, you can literally spend thousands of dollars and wake up six months later and be looking at something else that you need to get done. Well, this week, we're going to talk about something that really should be talked about more in the surgery community. You know, it is not something that is rare for a woman to look in the mirror and see something completely opposite of what is actually there. I myself have dealt with body dysmorphia since I was a very young girl. And even now, as an adult, I kind of suffer from it, but it's really weird because it's like backwards. But most women who are having surgery do have to be very careful because body dysmorphia can creep up on you and happen when you least expect it, even six to 12 to 18 months to two years post-surgery. So today I want to talk about what are the three most common signs of body dysmorphia and what are the three best ways to combat it. I know that this subject may not be the favorite in the plastic surgery world, but here at Make It Pop, we're not about the favorites. We're about being real and giving you that honest information that you need to make an informed decision on your surgery journey. But also more importantly, if you decide to have your surgery to make sure that you're happy with the results, if you don't do this the right way, you can literally spend thousands of dollars and wake up six months later and be looking at something else that you need to get done. That is not the way. And that is the reason why there are so many women out there that go back again and again and again and again and again and again without ever being happy. We do not want that to be you. One of the first signs that you may be struggling or on the verge of struggling with body dysmorphia is that you have an obsession with perceived flaws. You know what I'm talking about. When you're up in the mirror pinching that little tiny sliver of fat, calling it obesity or when you've already lost 15 to 20 pounds and you're looking amazing, but just because you're not a size zero yet, you are all distraught and focused on how much smaller you need to be instead of looking at how far you've come. Obsessing over a perceived flaws is a direct sign that maybe there's something deeper going on. Deeper that you need to work out with someone who can help you work through those emotions. It doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you. It just means that it needs a little bit of more time and a little bit of work to work through that. Before we get into number two, I just want to encourage you. What are some things that you have dealt with on your surgery journey or things that you have been scared to deal with on your surgery journey? Meet me in the comments. Tell me about those experience. Have you ever dealt with body dysmorphia? Do you know anyone who has? What does that look like in your eyes? We would love to hear from you. Sign number two is that you have excessive or unrealistic expectations. Let me explain. I am a big boned woman. It would be absolutely insane if I thought that after my surgery, I was going to look like Ariana Grande. It's not possible. <laughs> it literally is not possible. She's beautiful. She's amazing. But her and I have completely different body types. You having realistic expectations for your surgery can either make or break emotionally how you feel afterwards. So if you are not able to really pin down a realistic expectation, this is a sign that maybe we need to dig a little deeper before we go under the knife. If you know someone that you love and that you respect and that means the world to you that's been thinking about having a surgery journey, please share this page with them. Subscribe to this page if you're on your own journey. If you need credible information that you can trust, rest assured that is here. Let's get back into it. And sign number three, emotional distress and impaired functioning. This is a huge one because a lot of times people who are actually dealing with this emotional distress and impaired functioning, they look for other ways to try to numb that, whether it be alcohol, whether it be drugs, whether it be nicotine, whether it be food. And these are things not only are not the best way to cope with these feelings, but they're also habits that need to be 
weaned off of and hopefully broken before you step foot in a surgeon's office. That's our opinion here at Make It Pop. We know that it's easier said than done, but making sure that you are building on habits that are going to sustain your results is a big deal. If you do not do that, there is no point in having the surgery at all. Unless you just have a money tree that you don't mind just lighting on fire, make sure that mentally and visually and expectantly that you know what you want and that you know that you're in the right place. There is nothing wrong with that. There is nothing wrong with taking extra steps to make sure that you're ready for your surgery. That is you taking care of you. That is self-care. And you owe it to yourself. You owe it to the people that love you. And moms, you owe it to your kids to make sure that you're going into this process with the right thoughts in between your ears. Now, we're not going to leave you hanging. There are ways to fix this. And I could break them down into three different ways, but I'm going to give you one that I know for sure will help you. Make It Pop was designed for women who are going through their surgery journey. It was designed by women that have gone through a surgery journey. We designed this so that you would be able to have a solution for every single thing that comes your way, mind, body, and soul. So if you know anyone or that someone who is looking at having a surgery journey, do not go about it alone and don't do it without the right resources or information. We are here to guide you and make sure that everything that you need is provided. That professional help nutritionally. We help you set your expectations. If you're all the way at the beginning, we help you find a surgeon. We really hope that in the end, you have the best surgery experience that money, tools, and make it pop can buy.